welcome to the next module of uh, foundation course in managerial economics. Uh, we uh, ended the previous module talking about the various principles of economics and, uh, and I said that I am going to discuss a lot of models and uh, let us start the course with a very fundamental and very powerful framework used in economics which is called the demand supply framework. It is a very simple framework yet it is very powerful because it can be used to understand lot of changes in the market, lot of lot of uh, 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 lot of market interactions in the market and be it market for goods, services or be it market for even foreign exchange, be it market for um, investment, savings, funds in the funds market, loanable funds market. So, any kind of market, this demand supply framework, very simple framework of demand and supply is able to un uh, explain a lot of changes in these markets. So, before uh, uh, going to the uh, going into the actual framework, let me let me show what are the kinds of questions we are trying to address here. Now, first I am going to briefly introduce a concept called competitive market. This is an assumption that we are going to take while um, explaining this framework of demand and supply. Uh, competitive markets or perfect competition we are going to do in lot of details later, but I am going to briefly introduce the concept of competitive market here and because this is assumption that we are going to take and we are going to uh, also trying to understand what is demand and or, or what is demand curve and how is it determined. Basically, we are trying to understand demand and demand curve is something uh, a relationship that uh, a mathematical or a graphical relationship that we are going to use to understand demand and how is it determined. Then we are going to ask what are the factors that affect demand. Similar to the demand curve, we are going to develop something called the supply curve and we are going to try to uh, understand where does the supply curve come from, what is the supply curve and what are its major determinants, what are the factors which um, affect supply. And finally, once we have the demand curve and the supply curve in the market, we are going to be able to understand that there is a equilibrium in the market where demand equals supply. Basically, what is being demanded is getting produced. So, how does that happen? So, that is the market equilibrium and that is also going to answer uh, the question that how is price determined in the market. So, we said in the previous module we discussed that price acts as a signal in the market, right. So, when price acts as a signal in the market, where does this price come from? So, this is what we are going to see in this first week's lecture of demand and supply. As I said, we are going to take make certain assumptions. So, when we discuss the framework of demand and supply, we are going to assume a competitive market here. What does a competitive market mean? Competitive market does not, it is actually contrary to what uh, uh, we might think that in a competitive market everyone tries, tries to be better than the other, other and everyone is trying to basically um, uh, survive in the market and outwit its other rivals. But that is not the case at all in the case of a competitive market where basically the assumption is there are many buyers and sellers. There are so many buyers and sellers that it does not matter. It does not no, no buyer or no seller can affect each other's decision. No one can affect each other. It does not matter if a buyer exits the market, no one is going to notice. Similarly, if a seller enters the market, uh, no one is going to notice in the sense that it is not going to affect the prices or it is not going to affect the output that is being sold in the market. So, buyers there are 
there are infinite numbers of if, if not infinite a very large number of buyers and sellers and so no single buyer or no single seller is important in the market in any way. All goods are perfect substitutes. Again, contrary to the our common notion of the term competition that we use in uh, the lay layman's language, the competition term we use, where we are sort of one might think that we are competing to better one's product than the others. But in case of a competitive market, all products are perfect substitutes. What what one seller is selling is no way different than what the other seller is selling. So to the buyer, it does not matter who buys the product, who, from whom he buys the product from. So, and thirdly, the buyers and sellers can easily enter or exit the market. So when it does not make sense for somehow, if he feels that the cost is too much, going up too much, it's, he can easily quit the market and no one is going to notice also because it does not affect the market. Similarly, a buyer can any time um, a buyer can enter the market, he can exit the market without affecting the market. So a result of all these three first three assumptions is that everyone is a price taker. So price gets determined in the market, everyone looks at that price and if the price is acceptable to them, they buy or they sell. So. Um, so these are the assumptions behind competitive market and this is the assumption that we are going to take and now I am going to discuss about demand. Now what is demand? Quantity demanded of any good is the amount of that good that the consumers are willing to purchase at a certain price. So every consumer has a demand, every consumer has a demand, he basically expresses a uh, demand for a certain product like I am going to purchase this many units of pizza if the price is this, I am going to purchase so many garments if the price is this, I am going to um, uh, make so many phone calls if the per unit of per phone call it costs me this much. So these are the different willingness to pay which is there in the minds of the consumer. So this is, this is represented in the demand curve in the market. And that brings us to something which we call the law of demand. Law of demand because this is something which is uh, most often than not observed in the market that if the price goes down, the demand for the product goes up. And similarly, if the price goes up, the demand for the product goes down. So uh, let me uh, show through an illustration Say for example, we are talking about uh, a market where there is demand for market for ice creams and there is a demand for ice creams. So where does this demand come from in the market? Firstly the demand comes from the individuals, One, every buyer is going to go to the market and express his demand and every buyer has his own preference, own taste, everything and then he expresses his demand for ice cream in the market. So at a certain price, what I am going to demand would not be the same as or may not be the same as um, the amount that someone else is going to demand. Uh, and before, before, go, before actually derive the, deriving the demand curve, uh, let me show where does this demand com come from. Say for example, how many units of ice cream I would like to buy? that demand function, if I, if I write it as a demand function, say for example the demand for ice creams would be function of certain variables. That means certain, certain um, uh, my decision to buy the, the ice cream is dependent on lot of things. Firstly the price of the ice cream. Second what? Price of something which is similar to ice cream, say for example frozen deserts that are available if I have gone to the uh, market and I am looking for something cold, something frozen, I would lo look at ice creams, I would look at frozen deserts 
I would probably look at cold drinks also. So, price of substitute products that is similar products which can um, meet the similar kind of need that the ice cream needs. Thirdly, what? If I am rich, I am going to buy more probably. So, my income. Then, um, what else? Say, for example, um, if it is summer, I might buy more ice creams. When it is winter, I buy less. Or the temperature outside, what, what is the day temperature outside like? So, maybe weather. So, one can imagine lot of factors on which my demand for ice cream is dependent on. So, out of these, the demand curve that I have defined here, that the quantity demanded of any good, amount that the consumers are willing to purchase. So, that demand curve for ice cream is basically a function of only the price of ice cream. Other things remaining the same. So, these are the other things. So, in the law of demand, where I have already showed that other things remaining the same, the quantity demanded of any good. So, other things, these are the other things that I was talking about. So, these are the other things. Now, so now basically I am going to what I am looking for is a relationship between the quantity of ice cream that I am I would like to buy and the price of ice cream. Now, one more thing that I would like to mention here is we are always going to stick to this framework of price and quantity where quantity is on the x axis and price is on the y axis. This is something which are which we are going to uniformly uh, used during the entire course and this is something which is commonly used where price is always on the y axis and quantity on the x axis. So, now say I am trying to draw the demand curve of a particular individual say a person called Tom. Now, Tom has uh, say the ice cream could be of various prices 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and there are various quantities. Now, Tom knows that he decides that I am going to buy say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, I am going to buy 7 units of ice cream if the pri price is 10 rupees. I am going to buy 6 units of ice cream if it is 20. I am going to buy 30 units if it is, uh, sorry, I am going to uh, buy 5 units if it is 30 rupees and this is how he follows the law of demand and this is how he expresses his demand in the market. So, this is his demand curve for ice cream. Similarly, there could be another person, there could be another person say Jane who is not so much fond of ice cream as Tom and she is basically, she also expresses her demand for ice cream and when the price is 10, 10 rupees, she, she purchases See, she purchases 5 units of ice cream. When the price goes up, even less. When it goes up, even less. And this is her demand curve. So, each individual comes to the market which with their demand curve and all the demand gets, all the demand that aggregates in the market and we get something called the market demand curve. So, how, how is the market demand curve arrived at? So, basically market de demand curve say, market demand curve is going to so for the market demand curve at price of 10 rupees price of 10 rupees market demand is uh, 5 units for jane and 7 units for tom so it is 12 units 
20, 30, 40, 50. So, so say we aggregate the quantities demanded by Jane and Tom at each of the prices and this is the aggregate quantity that we get in the market. So, say it is 10, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4. So, this is the market demand curve, this is the market demand schedule that we arrive at. And here one thing uh, I would just like to point out is I am taking the example of two people aggregating it and showing the market demand curve. But going by, by our assumption of perfect competition, in a perfectly competitive market there cannot be two buyers, two buyers is too less. So, they if, if in a market there are only two buyers, they can actually influence the market. But this is just for simplicity that I am showing it, actually there can be whole lot of buyers and this is how the market demand curve is arrived at. You basically aggregate the quantities for each of the prices and you get the market demand curve. So, so this was the law of demand and in the next module, I am going to talk about the different determinants of demand. So, this is the, this was the like, uh, okay, I have cleaned the board now, uh, but uh, I showed the different other variables which affect demand and we are going to see how changes in those variables basically affect the demand schedule. So, this is what we are going to do in the next module. Thank you.